Hi, welcome back to my channel, Mrs. Shank Knits. My name's May, and this is my first Crafternoon video. I'm knitting on a test net, drinking my coffee, and chatting about using acrylic yarn. So my knitting life has been a mix of extremes when it comes to yarn, and it has taken some time to come to a true balance. When I first learned to knit, it was my mother who taught me with straight metal needles and acrylic yarn from Michaels, which I think is pretty common, pretty relatable. The first thing I ever knit was a pair of slippers. Actually, they're like cool construction. So you are knitting the whole thing flat and essentially like you cast on at the heel and then you knit kind of like back and forth until you get to the toe. And there are decreases towards the end for the toe to get smaller. And then you just like seam up the back and then seam up the top part of the toe and you're done. They were incredibly practical and I went on to knit almost a hundred, I would say, almost a hundred pairs over the next you know, few years as gifts and donations and every single one of them was knit with acrylic yarn from Michaels. And I just remember the pom-poms. She showed me, mom showed me how to make pom-poms and attach them to the slippers. That was maybe the best part, all the ridiculous pom-poms that I made with different combinations of acrylic yarn from Michaels. That was 2004. And it was another year or so after that when I discovered the cute local yarn stores scattered around Toronto. Um, the Knit Cafe was the first one I went to. It was actually the only one that I went to for like quite some time because it was near my apartment at the time um, and I could get a coffee and knit and it was so brilliant to me. I could not think of a better way to spend an afternoon. So that's when I discovered fancy yarn, like the, you know, the big name fancy yarn. So I think the very first fancy yarn that I got there was a skein of Malabrigio mohair and I had no idea what to do with it, but it was just so pretty I had to have it. And at this point I knew about like a handful of big names in yarn, but only what they sold at the Knit Cafe. I still had not learned about like artisan yarn, didn't know about any indie dyers yet. I just knew that I could afford and easily use the cheap acrylic stuff and that I loved the fancy big name stuff, um, but there was no way I could actually afford to knit something with any of it. Then I learned to knit socks and I discovered Knitty.com. And that combination opened me up to, you know, the whole world of hand dyed artisan yarns and single skein finished objects. So I didn't have a lot of money, but a $20 skein of sock yarn was, that would actually produce a pair of socks, was more accessible to me than, you know, like, 20, like five $20 DK skeins to knit a sweater with, right? So I became an avid sock knitter. <laughs> and since I wasn't all that fast at it, I didn't have much time to devote to it back then either. Um, so that let me, you know, buy really nice sock yarn and work through a pair of socks leisurely. And then most of the time those socks were like knit as Christmas and birthday gifts. So they also serve that purpose. And you guys, I literally knit socks and socks alone for 15 years. <laughs> Mind the outdoor noise, sorry. I think I did a blanket with some acrylic and maybe like a handful, I did a handful of stuffed animals too, that's true. But the, the overwhelming majority of my knits in that 15 year time frame were socks. And they were all socks from indie dyers or like fancy yarn companies because I only needed one skein at a time. Okay, so fast forward to 2020. I was doing some social media work for a local fancy yarn store. And in doing that, I learned so much about yarn. Like the store carried all the big fancy names, Hedgehog, BC Garn, Shibui, Wolfo, Easy Guard, etc, etc. And then of course they also had yarns from like some local indie dyers as well. And I fell madly in love with all of it. <laughs> I spent so much money on fancy yarn, like I can't even begin to admit. Um, anyway, and of course it started with sock yarn. But uh, like soon after that I knit my first sweater and then I immediately created a uh, dog sweater version of the pattern and I made one for Nacho too. Um, and then because I was writing about yarn in painful detail all the time, I knew like everything there was to know about the fiber construction and raw material sourcing and stuff like that. So then I started, you know, learning about like specific sheep and the different kinds of wool that are made from, from them, you know, <laughs> I realized wool is not made from sheep, but you know what I mean? <laughs> and of course, at the same time I was learning all this, I was also learning about acrylic yarns and what they're made from and how they're sourced and why so many people like seem to have a problem with them and why a lot of people are like anti-acrylic yarn. So naturally I stopped using acrylic yarn and I only knit with the fancy stuff, like the indie dyed stuff, anything but the acrylic stuff from Michaels. Um, so imagine after doing this for a while and, um, you know, knitting bigger projects like sweaters and shawls and things like that, it uh, was incredibly expensive. And also I was knitting matching dog sweaters to many of the sweaters I was knitting 
So not only is this like yarn expensive, like not only is the finished sweater expensive, it's also like kind of hard to care for, especially when we're talking about like a dog <laughs> wearing them, you know? Um, and then like planning out my make nine for 2021 and then again for 2022, I was like, wow, this is, you know, expensive, probably more than it should be like maybe I should be prioritizing this a little differently and then around the same time I started getting serious about designing dog sweaters and after testing out I don't even know how many different blends of yarn I found that it's an acrylic yarn that consistently works the best for dogs and there's like like never any skin irritation but it's also just really super easy to care for so I've been using uh, paint box yarns and as soon as I had a lot of that in my stash for designing these dog sweaters, I tested it out, of course, with a pair of mitts for myself and I loved it. So that was maybe like a year ago. I also remember that I had bought some Knit Picks Brava for a temperature blanket and then one of my teenagers started crocheting and I gave it all to her like to start her stash. Um, anyway, so the sweater that I just finished for Nacho was paint box yarn, but actually it was 100% cotton since it's a summer sweater. But overall, I've had really positive experiences with acrylic yarns after indulging in so much of the fancy stuff, specifically the paint box, other acrylic yarns too, but that's my favorite. I totally understand that acrylic yarn is not environmentally friendly, um, like in its production or in the way it's broken down. But at the same time, I also understand that with the cost of the alternative, some people may only reasonably be able to buy and knit with acrylic regularly, like me circa 15 years ago, you know? And I have heard the argument, like using acrylic yarn, but taking care of the garment that you make from it, like mending it when it gets worn, keeping it out of a landfill, or passing it on, that sort of thing. Um, and like being mindful to make things that you'll actually wear, like that you won't feel the need to pass them on as much. There are all ways that like using acrylic yarn is like, a, like can be more responsible. Um, and then of course, obviously, doing all of that and using natural fibers is even better. And of course it is, um, but it can make a huge difference in the affordability of knitting a sweater. So that's like impossible for people, you know? I was actually just looking at this. If I knit Andrea Maui's Weekender, okay? If I knit the Weekender sweater in the Brooklyn Tweed that it calls for, it would be about $100. And honestly, the Brooklyn Tweed is not as far on the high end as I thought it was gonna be. So $100 for a pretty reasonably priced 100% wool sweater. If I knit that same sweater in paint box, it would literally cost me half that, like a little over $50. And I say that, you know, with an Instagram feed full of sweaters and bougie yarn, I'm just understanding that I can indulge a little and love it and still use acrylic sometimes and love that too. Like I feel like it's hard for people new to knitting to hear that like their only means of knitting is bad and they shouldn't knit unless you know, they're knitting with natural fibers. I started knitting before Instagram, so I didn't even know that knitting with acrylic was frowned upon, either by people who are like reminding us how important sustainability is, or by, you know, self-professed yarn snobs who just think that acrylic yarn is like lesser, right? So for me, I was mostly like unaffected when I first started knitting, because I didn't know until years later. Um, I kind of slowly learned about it as I was able to afford it, and then of course, working for a fancy yarn store taught me a lot about yarn. And I think it taught me a lot about how people feel about yarn too. Like it's really interesting. Um, I think it's neat to learn about like what people first started knitting with and then what they tend to knit with now and why their thoughts on acrylic yarn and wool are what, like what they are. Um, it's just neat to see how like those things intertwine. Like, I mean, even super washed wool is not good for the environment and that is like a whole other thing. Um, I'm super curious about your thoughts on this issue of sustainability and accessibility and what you tend to knit with right now um, and what you're what you started knitting with like right now my stash is mostly a mixture of hand dyed natural fibers and super wash wool and a handful of acrylics now that I've been making all these dog sweaters. So mine is kind of a, a grab bag right now. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Please feel free to leave them in the comments or even better, make your own video and tag me so I can see. Um, I love when people do that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to show some support. And if you're new here, subscribe to my channel for more videos. I post daily knitting updates and share uh, patterns and fun projects on my Instagram every day. So if you're not following me over there, I am Mrs. Shank Knits. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.